How can you make the items in your drop down list appear in alphabetical order, even if the list itself is completely unsorted? Well, I'll show you how right now. Right, so I've got this list here uh, of various different office items and three different types of drop down lists. If you need to know more about those type of lists, I've got a video that talks through when to use each type and how to, how to populate them, etc, etc. But right now, I'm just going to show you how you can get a list sorted in order. So when I click on here, you can see everything is in alphabetical order, even though this list here is completely unsorted. I haven't, uh, you know, manually sorted this or anything else. What I've actually done, I'm just going to unhide some columns here, is I've just used a very simple technique. Used a formula to rank the position, the alphabetical ordering of that item, and then created a new list and used a, a match formula to take all those items and put them in alphabetical order. Then all I've simply done is link these drop downs to the new list. So that's the technique. I'll show you how you can pull it off right now. Okay, if you want this spreadsheet, click the link in the description. It'll come straight down to your computer and you've got all the formulas in place and you can just use your own lists, etc. That's what I suggest you do. And anyway, even when you work along, um, you're going to learn better if you work along using the spreadsheet that I've got. No registration or anything like that. You just get it. This is my randomly sorted list. So how do I rank it? Well, you can't use the rank formula for, a, it's a bit of a shame because that'd be nice and simple. The rank formula would be good for ranking values, but no good for ranking text. This method will rank text and values. So the formula, what we're going to do is you're going to count th this item within its own list. We're counting for, if I press F2, then there you go, see. So you're going to say, right, count the entire range of that column from the header downwards. Within that, look for anything that's less than or equal to the current item and count how many there are. Now, when you do use the less than or equals to on text, it acts as a kind of uh, an alphabetical check. So it will find everything that's alphabetically before that item, and then any numbers will also be included in there, and then count them. So what you end up returning is the position in a, an, of the item in an alphabetically sorted list. So in that case, that's 15. Appliances would be number one. If I was to put, for example, Z on the bottom, and the formula's just copied itself down, that give me 18. If I put A, sorry, A there, that's now position number one. Right, and then what I've got here is a fixed list of numbers. I've just got this put in the number one and then counted up from there. And then I'm using an index match to basically find the item with that rank and put it on that list. So an index max, max, index match, if you're not familiar with it, right. So what I'm saying is the match bit I'll describe first. So this is this bit of formula here. I'm saying find this number one in this column G here. And that what that does is it tells me the position. And because I've highlighted the whole of column G, it will just give me the row number that that number it, that uh, it finds it in. If it can't find it at all, it'll give me an error. And we, we can account for that later if, if you like, but at the moment we know our list length, so we don't need to worry about handling any errors. We know the 17 items in the list, so it's gonna be able to find all of them. Then I'm saying, right, so that's gonna return number, so number one is in column five, so that's gonna give me a number five. And then the index formula just allows me to return any position from a uh, range of cells. So we're saying from column F, return me position five, result of that match. 
So that's going to give me the fifth item in there. So the one on row five, which of course is the same as the rank that we want. So that's the formula. Copy that down. Now, as I said, if you put on another row and copy down, you'll get an error because there is no row 18. No, sorry, nothing with rank 18. So this is not a dynamic um, list. If you want a dynamic list, there's a, I've got plenty of videos on creating dynamic uh, lists. So there'll be one either on screen at the moment or in the description. So if you want to learn how to do this dynamically, you can. So now I've got my list in alphabetical order, it's just simply a case of linking those to the drop downs. For data validation, I'll just go through that because it's slightly different for each type. So data validation lists, data validation, as long as you've got it on a list, you could just link it straight to it. Uh, or you could use a named range and refer to it by its named range, which would be my normal preference. Form control, right click, format control, basically same thing. You've got an input range there, which when I highlight it, you can see briefly highlighted where it is, so that's easy. ActiveX control, slightly more complicated, got to go, but not desperately. So design mode, click on there, properties, and you can see you have list field range, J4 to J20. Um, perhaps not an ideal, not my personal preference in the way of populating an ActiveX control, but it works. I'll give you the drop down list on the worksheet, and if that's all you want, and you're going to run the result of this off somewhere, that's ideal. Okay, so that's how you get alphabetically sorted drop down lists, no matter what your main list is looking like. And just incidentally, uh, if I move stuff around, just to demonstrate that it doesn't even matter what happens here, uh, like that, these lists, they're still, auto, they're still sorting automatically. As long as your rank moves along with the um, item, no problem at all. It's all still going to work. So it's reasonably flexible too. All right. Hope that was helpful for you. Hope that's going to save you time because that's what I really want to do, save people time. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Make sure you check out the other videos on App for Excel. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon as well. You get notified of the next videos coming out.